Right, so I thought I'd do just a little drive today to show you guys how the full self-driving beta version 10.69.3.1 performs on snow-covered roads. So we're on a road, a service road right next to the airport, and this road is uh, very curvy up here and is completely snow-covered. So we're going to take this road and see how well the car does navigating through these corners. We're going to see if there's any sliding or skidding and how the car responds to that with full self-driving engaged. So. Go ahead and put the car in drive. So first off, I'm very impressed that the car is maintaining the right side of the road. There isn't really a visible lane marking in the middle. I could just barely make out uh, the yellow uh, dashed lines that are painted. But our car is uh, staying on the right hand side of the road as if it knew exactly where the lane was. Having just a little bit of difficulty here, finding where the lane is, I'm gonna slow down right there. I didn't trust it through that corner because this pole is here. If we did start to slide, I wouldn't have anywhere to go. So I'm gonna take it over right there. All right, so I'm going, so I just re-enabled full self-driving beta and uh, we'll see how it does in this corner. Ooh, it's a little nervous going through that. All right, so we're going to let the car make a left-hand turn right here. And then I'm going to actually take over and get it onto this street because I want to show you how well it does with these side streets that are completely snow covered. So the first thing I noticed is that the car is staying towards the right hand side of the road. The second thing I'm noticing is that the car makes no effort to slow down at uncontrolled intersections um, such as the one we went through back there where there are no stop signs in any direction. So the, the expected action for any driver coming up is that they would yield for any other drivers or traffic coming through those. Uh, but the car just proceeded through that at the set speed. I'm not sure if it did that because it wasn't detecting any other cars or because it didn't detect a traffic control like a stop sign uh, at that point. So we'll let the car stop here. It did feel a little bit of sliding coming into that. And we'll disable full self-driving, take over, and find another section of those streets to test. Okay, so I've turned on to this street. It is pretty icy right here. I do have the set speed at 27, and the car has reprojected a route to make a right-hand turn right up here. So we're going to want to slow down. Uh, the car will want to slow down. We do see that do it, doing it coming into the intersection. There was a little bit of sliding. I think the car realized that this is not uh, not a very good traction surface. And so it did come to almost a full stop to make that turn. Let's see if it does it again right up here. Again, this is that uncontrolled intersection I was just talking about. And the beep that we heard there was, it wanted me to put my hands on the wheel, it was not feeling that resistance. So just put a little bit of pressure right here as it makes those turns. So we're back to the stop sign. We're going to let it slow down and come to a stop, and then I'll take over once we're stopped. Okay, so that was very good. No sliding on that one. All right, so now I'm just going to hold off a little bit to enable full self-driving until we get past this turn point. Let it reproject the route right here, and then we will enable full self-driving. And again, it seems to be pretty confident through these uncontrolled intersections. There are no stop signs from the left to right uh, or for our direction uh, through those. 
Uh, here we are at another intersection that's got quite a bit of ice and the car does slow down very nicely well ahead of the need to actually come to a stop. And I don't know if you caught that on camera, but it did kind of kick a little bit through that intersection and, and slide just beyond uh, the normal turn part. Uh, so now we are sitting on the right-hand side of the, of the road, and this is actually a place where cars would park. It's not the area that we would normally be at, but since there aren't strong road markings, the car doesn't know exactly where it should be in this lane. Uh, so I'm going to take over right here, move it over to where it should be. All right, so now we're back in that section of the road we were on before, but we're going the other direction. We do see a car parked over here, a couple of cars parked. And we do slide over towards the center of the lane, and then back over to the right-hand side of the road. Uh, very nicely done. That's great lane positioning for full self-driving on a surface that doesn't see any markings. I'm just going to take over at that point. And now we're going to try some left-hand turns. So we'll get into another area here. And um, uh, again, a lot of a lot of sliding in that area. Uh, the ABS system, uh, analog brake, uh, did engage right there. But that was all full self-driving maneuvering the car uh, through that stop and through the turn. So we do have a stop sign at this intersection. We're going to see how it does coming into it. Um, I do see a lot of ice on some of the tracks coming through the intersection, so I do know that it's slippery. Our car did slow down. I did not detect any slipping or sliding in that, in that intersection. And just up here, we're going to stop this stop sign and make a left-hand turn. All right, so we're just going to hold here for a second. We've got a hold limit. Car coming up, a couple of cars coming up from the right. One just passed. Got a truck out here in the distance. And then there's somebody coming up from the left, but we should be able to make that. All right, very strong acceleration through that uh, little patch of ice, and I did feel the back end start to slide. Um, but the car, it, whether it lands on good traction pavement or uh, then corrects itself, uh, as we saw with the ABS, um, it does tend to recover from those. But I think its tendency to want to accelerate so strongly in the corners is, is working against it a little bit in terms of maintaining traction. So we're coming up on an interesting series of turns. We're going to make a stop right here and a right turn. There's no stop signal, uh, but the car does slow down appropriately for the surface conditions of the road. Made that turn. We'll make a left-hand turn. Um, this is also an area where uh, I'm interested to see how the car performs because we do have sun coming straight into the front cameras, and so it does not pick up as much visibility in that situation. I thought it did pretty well right through that turn. All right, so we're gonna let the car continue on. The second part of our drive today will be uh, to the downtown Eau Claire area. Uh, so we're gonna use some side streets, city streets, and then uh, work our way into the downtown area and end at the Pablo Center. And that'll be the, the last part of our drive. So the car is favoring uh, a navigation route that does not take us 
through any freeway or four lane uh, traffic situations. And we do see here, not, the roads aren't as bad as what we were driving on before, uh, but we do see that the car is maintaining the right side of the road as you would expect, even though we don't see strong lane markings and part of the road is snow covered. So very good job with the lane positioning for the car through this part of the route. Did get a little bit of slowing right there just because we had some parked cars and there's an oncoming car. Uh, so I thought that was very good, very cautious. And we'll let the car go for a couple of miles here before we make our next turn. J actually just over a mile we'll make our turn. All right, here we are on Birch Street, just getting ready to make a right turn onto Birch Street. We do have a four, we have we do have a stop light and a yield sign for our direction. So I don't see any traffic coming up from the left. We should be able to proceed, and we do. The car it looks like it's going to follow this route pretty much into the downtown area, but I do want to get back on some of those side streets, those residential streets that are snow covered and ice cover just to see how the car performs through that. So I'll take over here in just a minute and get us off this road. Okay, so we do have the full self-driving engaged here. We've got residential streets with parking on both sides. Uh, snow covered, very slippery. The car is doing a nice job though slowing down right there. That's good. So the car did make a, a right turn. It did turn a little abruptly into some of the snow debris on the side. Uh, but then as it was correcting, it did see that there was a postal vehicle that was just pulling out from its route. And it slowed down appropriately to let that vehicle pass. So this is, at this point, this is the car navigating me through all of these turns, intersections, and stop, stop signs. So. Uh, we are stopped at this intersection. It's uncontrolled from the left and right. No traffic. Should be able to make that turn. I didn't see any issue with that other than it taking a little longer than I normally would. So again, very nice lane positioning. We are just a little bit to the right of where it normally would be. Uh, but there aren't any car parked cars right here, so I think that's valid. I do see a parked car up here. It's going to need to maneuver towards the center of the lane. And it does. So we've got just a little bit of a corner here with a hill. Nicely done. They did feel a little bit of sliding as we came through the other side of that. Uh, but the car did slow down so the sliding would stop. And that stop right there, I could hear the analog brake system engaged throughout the entire stop. So the car did come to the intersection, the brakes were, the tires were not grabbing any pavement. Uh, ABS was working and the car, full self-driving, remained in charge uh, of the vehicle and uh, controlling it through that. So we're going to get back on the main route here. Um, I thought the car did a really nice job selecting that specific lane to make this left-hand turn. And now it is going to want to be in the left lane eventually. There we go. And I do see uh, some turn signals. It's kind of inconsistent, but I do see turn signals for uh, most of the lane changes on this route. So we do have a couple of oncoming vehicles here. We're in the left turn lane. Our car is going to wait. It's not going to assert itself in front of those vehicles. Then it has to pick a route that goes between the car and the curb, and it did a nice job with that. 
Uh, the car did shift itself into the right lane. We do have two lanes here. And we're eventually going to want to be uh, making a right turn up here so it does get into the right lane to continue the route of navigation. So from an artificial intelligence driving standpoint, having to model the environment, uh, I would I would guess that there aren't a lot of full self-driving Teslas that drive through this area. So there's a lot of data that's getting back to Tesla to assess this area. So for the most part, these roads are, are pretty new, except for the driving that I do on them. And maybe if there are other beta testers, a few other beta testers here in town. Uh, so the car is having to make choices based on uh, routes that it has never been on before, uh, nor have other FSD vehicles been on before. Uh, and it's doing a wonderful job. It's modeling these intersections. It's getting into the appropriate lane. Uh, right here, we've got four-way stop with a couple of pedestrians. So we do have traffic crossing in front of us. Those pedestrians did choose to use the other crosswalk, so they were not an issue for us. Car proceeded through that intersection and we are here at our destination. This is the Pablo Center. Very good, so a little bit of roughness at the end, but uh, I thought the car did a very nice job throughout the navigation. Um, I was really not sure what it was going to do throughout this uh, drive because the roads were very uh, very covered up, very contaminated, didn't see a lot of road markings, and they were slippery. And I really have not tried full self-driving beta in slippery conditions where analog brakes are used. So I wasn't sure if the car even knew how to handle those situations, but it did. I did sense it slow down sufficiently like I would have done as a human driver when the roads are not good and then be able to make those uh, turns without sliding around too much. I did lose some traction a few times through the turns, uh, but nothing really uncontrollable. It wasn't like the car was careening off the side of the road or skidding off the side uh, throughout the turn where I felt it would have been unsafe. Well, that was a handful this morning. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous on that test drive, uh, but the car performed very well. well. That's all I have for this week. If you enjoyed the drive, uh, please hit the like button and we will catch you in the next one.